This is Andy Perlwa for Boxing News. I'm joined by promoter Eddie Hearn here in Monaco. Eddie, that has ended up being a very entertaining night here. Everybody looking good as well. I, I didn't get a memo. I was just told to turn up in a suit. So I still pulled the free piece out, Ed. You, did. you pulled it out. There's one bloke here in a tracksuit. I don't know. Stone Island tracksuit. He was. I think he was uh, one of Jay's fans from Wales. Either that or he was absolutely caked. One of the two. So. <laughs> Um, but here we are, it was obviously a very entertaining night there. Um, let's just start off with the main event. Joe's sat there and still a very close fight in the end. But... Yeah, I thought it was. I thought he won the fight by one, maybe two rounds. But I did think it was a close fight. And, you know, I thought Vasquez boxed very well. Um, all of the, the hurtful stuff, all of the eye catching stuff was from Joe. But Vasquez didn't stop, particularly in the back end of the fight. So I thought he done well. Um, I don't think it was Joe's best performance, but solid performance in a great fight and a, a great night of boxing. How close did you personally see it, Eddie? Because online, a lot of people had it a draw, maybe edging either way. Yeah, I think we, what was the poll? 65 to 35 to Joe on our socials. Um, I thought I had it probably about that in scores. Like I had, I think after nine rounds, I had it like 6 3 or 5 4 to Joe. And then I thought he probably won 11. He definitely won 12. And I just felt that, you know, and I, I don't, I'm not necessarily always in agreement with you have to rip the belt off the champion. You have to win. But obviously, you know, you're a challenger in a situation. You know, people talk about scorecards. We had three neutral judges tonight. Joe's from Cardiff. We're in Monaco. You know, I mean, it was a level playing field as you're going to get for someone like Vasquez getting a shot at a world title. And he came up short, but he did very, very well. Just on Vasquez, obviously some very entertaining fights that could be proposed to him now. Where do you see his future? Do you think he can get back to 126? Yeah, I mean, I think he looked good at 130, but I think he can still make 126. And, you know, you look at our um, roster in both divisions. You talk about Maurizio Lara returning. That's an incredible fight against Vasquez. You've got Rocky Hernandez against Vasquez. Incredible fight. You've got Sugar Nunes against Vasquez. You've got Zelfa Barrett against Vasquez. I mean, like he's not going to have a problem getting a big fight, but... Well, other than he's very tough and he's a dangerous guy and uh, 26 or 30, he's going to be a real threat. So I'm a Joe Cordina from there's all those names that have been mentioned earlier in the week. What do you think seems most likely now that you can start to plan towards the future? Yeah, Joe's going to want the biggest fight for the most amount of money. And, and you know, whether that's Lee Wood, whether that's Foster, whether that's Navarrete, I, I don't even rule out a move to 135 at some point for Joe. I think it's inevitable, but I would like to see him face the champions at 130 as well. How far off do you feel that is? Because Joe said to me earlier in the week, one more fight at 1.30 before he does move up. Yeah, I mean, again, sometimes you find out after the fight that the weight was a little bit di more difficult than you'd heard and we'd have to see, speak to Joe and Tony. But I think when you have a belt at 1.30, it's difficult just to give it up and chase fights at 1.35. So that's a big move and it needs to come with a strategy behind it. I'm just away from that, just to touch on the rest of the um, card. Second round knockout victory for Korea. Yeah, I mean, look, we were t Mexico was 20 seconds away from, um, sorry, Combs, like, what? Um, anyway, um, last week, Mexico was 20 seconds away from a new world champion in Rocky Hernandez. Tonight, they got one against the head. Unbelievable knockout, knockout of the year from Curiel. Gutted for Nonshinga because we love him. And, you know, we were talking about unifications and undisputed championships, and it was a massive blow for him tonight. Um, but incredible for Curiel and Mexican boxing. Look, you know, you're talking about the difference of a few pounds to go up and fight the likes of Sonny and Bam and uh, Martinez. So we'll have to see, but massive win for him. Maybe we look at a rematch for Nonshinga, but it was a heavy, heavy knockout. Pleased to see him get up because it looked bad. Ramla Ali, reversing result of the first fight. What did you make of her performance? Yeah, very proud, you know, I think um, I was a bit worried this week if we'd done the right thing. You know, sometimes you have to save a fighter's pride and I just felt that she could always beat Guzman. But to do it mentally, coming back after that, that defeat, I think it showed a lot of heart. I thought she boxed really well. She traded at times. And now I think it's time to see her fight for the world title. I think, you know, we've got Rivas against Erica Cruz coming up November 18th, which is a brilliant fight. I think she should fight the winner for the world title. And of course, Solomon Sissoko victorious but here. Just your thoughts on his performance and what's next for him? Yeah, he's been out for 11 months. So, you know, it was a bit methodical at times. And when he hurt Curiel, uh, Curiel uh, when he hurt his opponent, you want him to jump all over him. Um, and you no, know, but he was tough. And you know, I think now we have to get momentum. Take a big fight tonight. Was live on RMC in France, and they support him. And I'd love to do a big fight in Paris and, and throw him in the deep end.
Eddie, it wasn't long ago there was talk of you and Frank Warren meeting up having a, a spot of lunch. Uh, Frank's obviously done some interviews recently, or just yesterday, sorry. Um, certainly had a few choice words about your comments surrounding Tyson Fury. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, really. I mean, if I get asked my comments on a fight, I don't see why I shouldn't really give them. Like, and it, at the end of the day, whether you agree with them or not, they're just my comments. So, you know, I saw a post today where someone was saying, isn't this a bit boring now? It's been like eight years backwards and forwards, but I guess you guys love it. Um, I don't know. I don't really see Frank as a competitor. I, 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 like, I like to see him do well because I have no fear or I see him as no threat. So I honestly wish him the best and, you know, um, I hope that they continue to do well. I hope that their broadcaster continues to support British boxing. So are we going to go out for a steak and chips before Christmas? Probably not. Would I make a fight with Queensbury at any moment? Absolutely. And, you know, I think that, that my, my relationship with George Warren, you know, we're probably not also going to go. We, actually, we'd, we'd be much more likely to get a bite to eat. Um, but when there's a fight to be made, I think it will get made. But um, I don't see many fights to make at the moment, but always willing. Some people who you might have a spot of lunch eat with is um, Bob Arum, Al Heyman, Oscar De La Hoya, because he wants to try and get all of you guys together to make the fights across each stables, um, likely or unlikely. Yeah, look, I think, you know, I mean, the PBC right now don't have a broadcaster, so Oscar's put a, was it a tweet out to all their fighters saying, come and join Oscar. Um, that's, that's kind of like Eddie Hearn style, really, isn't it? Old Eddie Hearn style. Maybe my new style is a little bit more deviant. Um, yeah, look, Bob, you know, Bob, none of them really like me, but Bob, Bob will at least make fights if it makes sense for top rank. So, you know, Al Heyman, a little bit of a different kettle of fish, but that might change now. Um, one man I saw here tonight who I wasn't expecting is Mr. Alex Krasiuk. Um, can you tell me as to what business you guys may be discussing moving forward? Just always talking with Alex, he's a good friend. You know, we had a, a great relationship with him and Usyk, and who knows what the future holds. Obviously, he's got getting ready for a few Usyk fight. We saw that Francis Ngannou fight um, last week. Just anything back on their behalf from regards to Anthony Joshua? No, no, I reached out to him yesterday or the day before and said, look, if you want to talk about that fight, let's discuss having her back yet. And Chisora throwing his hat into the ring for that fight. Interested? Always. It's a good fight, actually. But I can't see Ngannou taking that fight. Just the final one. On to Newcastle next week. Yep, Cancun, Monaco, Newcastle. <laughs> and then Los Angeles and, of course, the big one in Dublin. Cameron against Taylor and then on to Belfast for a massive card with Mick Conlon. Then Haney Progre. Um, Bam against Sonny. And either way, December 23 will be involved in some boxing. So watch this place. Right, Eddie, I look forward to that announcement. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Thank you.